But before I tell you all that good stuff, let me tell you the more down times in my life. Obviously, it was difficult for my parents, but it was also difficult for me. When I went to school, a lot of kids teased me. A lot of kids put me down. It was very difficult at starters to find friends because everybody would look at me and think, well, maybe he also has a mental disability, and then people don't know how to approach me. But my parents encouraged me to just speak with people. And as I speak, a lot of people would say, well, hey, he's just like everybody else, just with a few parts missing. You know, I'm just like you. I've just gone out on the limb a couple more times than you have for my friends. But uh, it's all good. But uh, it was very difficult at times, and I had no one to tell me that everything's going to be okay the way I wanted it said. Because the way I wanted it said was, I wanted to be able to believe someone when they said, Nick, it's okay. Everything's going to be okay. The problem is if anyone did say that, even my parents at times, I would say, how do you know? How do you know how it feels to be in my position? You don't even know the future. How can you say that I'm going to have a good life? You cannot. Last January, within three weeks, three of my family members died. January 2005, my uncle, my grandfather, and one of my cousins. The day after my grandfather was buried, my uncle, 53-year-old man, had a heart attack, died. Five days before he died, he was at the doctor's and everything was fine. What can you tell me to encourage me? Can you tell me anything? Only if you've been through it. And this is what I'm here about. I want to tell you I was depressed. I had suicidal thoughts at the age of eight. I had this massive list of all the things that I couldn't do and I'll, I'll never have in life. I never thought, you know, <laughs> I'll get married. Who'd want a husband without arms and legs? And I thought even if I ever did get married, I'm not going to be even able to hold my wife's hand. I'm not going to be able to dance with my bride on our wedding night. I used to hate going to public parks and seeing fathers throwing up their kids in the air and sometimes dropping them. <laughs> you know, I won't have that intimacy with my sons and my daughters. But I couldn't do this and I couldn't do that. And no one had any answers. And I thought I was the only one in such a predicament. What happened? What changed? The first thing I got you to write down was perspective. How you see your life is the first key. Who are you? And where are you in life? This is the first question I want to ask you. Even though the world can look at me, they can say, well, a guy having no arms and no legs, his potential is not unlimited, but limited. His potential, just because he has no arms and no legs, humanly speaking, in our logic, he's not going to be as successful as everybody else. Really? Why? Because of his disability. Really? What is a disability? Have you ever thought of that? A disability. I'll tell you what a disability is. Something that would hinder you to achieve something. Now, just because I have no arms and no legs, it doesn't mean that I can't be successful. It doesn't mean that I can't do a business degree like I've done, a Bachelor of Commerce in Financial Planning and Accounting. That didn't stop me. Then what really stops you? Your mind. The way you see your life and where you are going will determine how successful you will be in life. I could say, yeah, I'm a guy without arms and legs, but what? I have my little chicken drumstick. Don't ask yourself and see what you don't have, see what you do have, and then say, okay, this is where I am. But don't limit yourself to say, well, if only I had this, or if only I had that. You can think of all the things that you don't have, but I want to ask you, is that really constructive? No. Why? Because no one can turn back time. It's up to you with what you do with today. Your priorities, your daily agenda will determine how successful you are. You want to know something? I started to be 
thankful. Thankful? Why, Nick? How could you be thankful? My mum showed me a newspaper article of a young man who had a disability, not similar to mine, but it was also unexplained medically. And I thought, you know what? I'm not the only one with something to bear. But I'm telling you, this perspective is everything. Giving yourself enough credit. Write this down. Give yourself credit. Even if the whole world told me that, Nick, you have no arms and no legs, you're not good enough, you're not going to reach your fullest potential, and even if you do, it's not going to be compared to anybody else's potential because you have no arms and no legs. Even if the whole world has that discouragement on you or their view on you, you don't have to believe them. You get it? You don't have to believe others' opinions. Because it's just an opinion. If a doctor comes to you and says, hey, I'm sorry, you've got cancer. What are you going to do? Get a second opinion. Right? Why? Because you want to make sure that he's right. You want to know exactly how much you have to live and what's going on. Well, why not get a second opinion when people put you down? Why not get a second opinion when your family thinks you're dreaming? Tell him he's dreaming. He's I wouldn't change anything about this. I don't see this as a disability. I see it as a gift. Do you want to know why? It gives me the greatest joy to know that I may not have arms and legs, but I can give teenagers who are committing, trying to commit suicide. I've seen it. Slashing their wrists, taking pills, ODing, everything, because the world is looking for hope. And I wouldn't change a thing because I can give them that. This is just the beginning. This is just, I'm only 23. I'm only 23. First thing, be thankful. Know where you are. Now when you establish where you are in life and who you are in life and you give yourself a little bit of credit, do you know how I gave myself credit when I was seven years old? Check this out. I just remembered this last week. Some people at school were teasing me for how I looked. I looked myself in the mirror and I said, yep, yeah, I don't have arms and legs. They're right. But I said, look at my eyes. I told myself, look at your eyes. You've got beautiful eyes, young man. I said, you are hot. <laughs> I said, no one can take that away from you. Your eyes, if it's only your eyes that you can concentrate on, then concentrate on that. Do you get the message? If you find one positive thing about your life that no one can argue with, then hang on to that and go from there. Now, where are we going? Once you establish where you are and hang on to the positive things, the assets that you have, then expand on that. Stop thinking of what missed opportunities are out there. Because then you'll miss more. Where are you going? Vision. Vision. What is your vision? 